Noggin and the Birds. Listen, I will tell you a tale. Be still, and I will tell you of Noggin, Prince of the Nogs, the young king who ruled over a land of mountains, ice and snow in the far north. It was a cold winter. The snow had fallen early. The Nogs had gathered their corn and their fruit and wood for their fires, and now, warm in their houses, they were safe for the winter. Noggin the Nog looked out from his castle. He spoke to Graculus, the great green bird who was his friend. Graculus, he said, the birds on that branch are cold and hungry. They should be fed and warmed. You speak kind words, Noggin, replied Graculus, but kind words will not feed birds. All right, don't rush me, said Noggin. Go forth and tell every bird in my kingdom that I will feed them today. Graculus flew away. That was the hardest day's work that Noggin and his warriors had ever done. All day the bonfire in the courtyard blazed. All day the nogs threw corn, and all day the birds came fluttering down like twittering many-coloured snowflakes to eat their fill and be warmed. As dusk began to fall, it seemed that all were fed and warmed. The last birds were flying to their nests. That's that then, said Noggin, mopping his brow. But, even as he spoke, a dark shadow passed across the setting sun. Another bird was landing. It was a blue, red and white bird with a yellow beak. Its legs were thick as trees. When it stood in the courtyard, its head was higher than the highest castle tower. And when it spread its wings, it hid the sky. Sorry I'm late said the bird. Noggin came out from where he was hiding. Oh, he said. Oh, bird, you are a bit larger than we expected. But I said I would feed the birds and I will. Eat your fill and be welcome. <whistles> the bird ate 18 sacks of corn, seven sacks of seed and a small cartload of dried peas. Then it drank the fountain dry and spoke. Thank you, that was good, it said. Maybe I'll be able to do the same for you one day. Goodbye. What sort of bird was that, asked Noggin as it flew away. That was a lesser orp, replied Graculus. A lesser orp, laughed Noggin. Let's be thankful the greater orp did not come. The years passed. The Nogs thought they had seen the last of the great birds, but they were wrong. One year the harvest was so poor that it would not last the winter. Noggin commanded a long ship to be filled with the royal treasure. They would sail it to the Southland and exchange it for corn and potatoes. We must go now, he said, before the winter cold freezes the sea. So they sailed to the Southland and exchanged their treasure. The Southland was rich, but its merchants were mean. And all they got for their treasure was half a boatload of corn and potatoes. But, even so, the journey back was hard. The boat was heavy to row. No wind came to fill the sail. And every day, the weather grew colder. One evening, Noggin noticed thin plates of ice forming on the sea. He would have liked to row on but the men were too tired. They rolled into their blankets and slept. Suddenly the boat lurched and rocked. Hold tight, cried Noggin, a storm! It was an odd storm, because although the boat pitched and rolled, and although the wind whistled, there was no sound of waves. The Nogs were used to storms, so soon they went back to sleep. Wake up, you lazy lot! The Nogs jumped awake. It was morning. They looked out. Not one of them will ever forget the sight they saw. There was no sea. The boat was perched on top of a mountain, and all around them stood the lesser orps. Greetings, Nog in the Nog, said one of them. We had to lift you from the sea before it froze and crushed your little boat. 
Years ago, I came to your castle when I was cold and hungry. You fed me and warmed me, though I ate more than all the birds of your kingdom put together. Eat now, and then we will take you home. The birds gave the nogs some huge hairy nuts to eat. They were delicious. Then two of them lifted the boat by the mast and flew with it to Noggin's castle. Behind them came a line of lesser orps, each one carrying a big bunch of the nuts, which it dropped into the courtyard. Graculus looked at the mountain of nuts. That should certainly last us through the winter, he said. And several winters to come, by the look of it, said Noggin the Nog. Goodbye, birds, and thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.